Hey everyone, Todd here, and you know why you clicked on this video, Lumix GH6. I've had one for a few days, let's jump in. Some of the key features for this camera include a brand new 25 megapixel sensor with dynamic range boost. Now the dynamic range boost is gonna benefit us both in photo and in video. On the video side, of course, 13 stops of dynamic range is gonna give us a lot of leeway in post-production. But also on the photography side, we're gonna get HDR type images with a single exposure. That's pretty cool. Also, we have a brand new Venus processing engine, which is two times more processing power, which is key to some of the features that we're gonna talk about in a little bit. We also have V-Log and we have V-Gamut. Notice I said V-Log, not V-Log Lite. Also, we have 315 autofocus points instead of 255, and we have a 75 frames per second stills burst in RAW and JPEG when we're using the electronic shutter and autofocus single. This camera has seven and a half stops of in-body image stabilization with dual IS2, which also allows one of the new features, which is the 100 megapixel handheld high resolution shot. Now, one of the cool things that we're gonna get with this camera is the ability to record ProRes 422 and ProRes 422 HQ internally. Now, that's a lot of data and a lot of information that's being recorded. We'll talk about that as it relates to the card slots in just a little bit. Also, we're gonna get 422 10-bit Cinema 4K and 4K up to 60 frames per second with unlimited recording. Now, most of the modes in this camera are gonna have unlimited recording, so that's pretty significant. And also along with that, we're gonna get simultaneous internal recording and HDMI output. So in the high frame rate mode, we're gonna be able to capture 420, 10-bit 4K at 120 frames per second with both autofocus and sound. And then we're gonna be able to capture 422 10-bit in full HD, 240 frames per second. And if we're shooting in long op, it's gonna be 200 megabits per second. And if we're shooting in all eye, it's gonna be 800 megabits per second. And on the variable frame rate mode, we're gonna be able to capture 420 10-bit full HD at 300 frames per second in long op. And we're gonna be able to do an autofocus right up front before we start recording. And if you're not really sure of the difference between the high frame rate mode and the variable frame rate mode, well, the high frame rate mode is when you slow that down or interpret that footage in post-production. And on the variable frame rate, it's actually already slowed down or conformed in camera to the frame rate that you chose. Now also we're gonna be able to record 5.7K 10-bit at 60 frames per second. And we also have anamorphic modes. And those anamorphic modes are gonna be 420 10-bit. And at 5.8K, we can record up to 30 frames per second. And at 4.4K, we get up to 60 frames per second. Also, the majority of our frame rates are gonna have all eye and long op available to them. And the menu system on this camera is gonna be the same as you would see in the GH5 Mark II or the S series cameras. So let's run through some of the exterior features of the camera itself. So first of all, really good in the hands, feels great. The ergonomic feel of this is kind of like a mix between a GH5 and a G9, so it feels great in the hand. Also, it's a little bit thicker in the back and you'll notice the venting that we have on the sides over here, very much like what you see in the S1H as far as keeping the camera cool, yet it also maintains the dust, splash, and freeze resistance. Also, we have a video record button that sits on the top separate from the shutter release. So we have a video record button here and we also have one in the very front. I love the addition of the one here in the front, much like, like I have on my S1H. Also, we have our recording tally lights as well. We have one in the back and there's also one on the front. Now, when it comes to the record tally lights, we have a few options in the menu. We can actually set the brightness of these to be high, low, or even turn them off. Also, we have our time code connector up here, it's like a flash sync port time code connector, but we have a BNC conversion cable that comes with the camera itself. So as far as the screen on the camera, we pretty much have the same screen that we have on the S1H, so we can flip it out rotate it around, stays nice and clear of any of the cables that we may have plugged in. And also we can tilt the screen. Now what's different though than the S1H is in the S1H we had a little lever here or a little lock. We don't have that, we just have some tension and then I can pull that out and I can tilt that screen. So that works wonderfully. Also on the top of the camera, we have an audio information button. So when I click the audio information button, it's gonna display all my audio settings back in the back display. And I can go in and touch screen, of course, and I can adjust those and change them. 
And the EVF that we have here is gonna be the same EVF as the GH5. And we have the eight-way joystick back here, just like we have on the S series of cameras. Let's talk about the card slot. I mentioned earlier when we were talking about recording 800 megabits per second, the ProRes HQ, ProRes 422 internal. Well, two things. First of all, we have a locking card slot, so it's not just gonna open up. Pull the lever down, open it, and then I have the card slot release. And in here, I've got two slots. The first slot is gonna be a CF Express Type B, and then the second slot is gonna be the UHS-2 V90 SD card slot. Really important that we have both of these. We do not have an XQD card slot. So when we're recording those higher megabits, then we're gonna be using the CF Express card. So the basic rule of thumb here as far as the recording slots, anything over 600 megabits per second is gonna use the CF Express, and then anything at 600 megabits or below, we can use the SD as long as we're using that UHS-2 V90. Now, I was not aware that this may have been a concern, but apparently with the GH5, some people would like to have an eye cup that didn't slide off, but would lock in place. And we have a locking eye cup here, which is great. And also the front buttons here in the front are more pronounced. So you definitely know when you're on them and you're working with those buttons. And then the battery, let's talk about the battery for a second. So the battery for this camera is gonna be the BLK22. And that's this one here. This is the same battery that we have in the S5. Now you can use the previous generation, the BLK19 battery, but you are gonna limit some of your recording options. So for instance, you're not gonna be able to record anything over 60 frames per second. So uh, stock up on the BLK22 type batteries. Now remember earlier on when I was talking about the 100 megapixel handheld high resolution mode, well we can access that right up here on the dial as opposed to just going into the menu. It's one of the options that we have up here on the dial. Now as far as keeping the camera cooled off, I already talked about the vents, but we also have a fan that's in this camera as well. And we have a few different options that we can customize how that fan works. So we can set it to prioritize the body heat of the camera itself, or we can prioritize the internal heat of the camera. And then we can also have it set for constantly running at either high, medium, low, or we can even turn it off. So in addition to powering the camera through the battery, which is obvious, we also have a USB-C power delivery connection over here. So with our USB-C PD connection, we can basically do a few different things. First of all, we can transfer files over to the computer and we can also charge the camera with that connection, but we can also with an adapter, power the camera through that USB-C connection as well. While we're over here on the side, notice we also have a full HDMI port, and then we have our microphone and our headphone jack. So far, we've run through some of those high-level key specs for this camera. Now, the GH6 is really aimed at that true hybrid content creator, really focusing on both the stills and also the video. So let's turn our attention towards and talk a little bit more about some photography-specific features. First of all, we've already talked about it, the 25 megapixel sensor, which really focuses on a high definition and high resolution images, and also giving us cleaner images and higher ISO. Now we also have edge correction, which is done through the intelligent detail processing as they are calling it. So we're gonna get cleaner images at a higher ISO, and we're also not gonna lose that definition around the edges. We also have a 2D noise reduction, which gives us two basic things. Number one, it's gonna reduce some of the unpleasant color noise that we get, as well as some of the graininess that we get in the luminance noise. As far as shutter speeds are concerned, we go from 60 seconds to 1 thousandth of a second, and our ISO starts at 100 for stills, and the dynamic range boost, which we already talked about just to reiterate, gives us HDR-like images with a single exposure. So obviously with a hybrid camera, they have the photographer in mind. Let's then turn our attention and dive a little bit more into some of the video specs. Now earlier I was talking about the dynamic range boost and about 13 plus stops of dynamic range that you're gonna get with that turned on. When you have it turned off, you're gonna get 12 stops of dynamic range. Now let's talk about that in relationship to shooting in different profiles. So first of all, if I'm shooting in V-Log and I have the dynamic range boost turned on, then my base ISO is gonna be 2000 as opposed to 250 when it's turned off. And if I'm shooting in Cine D or Cine V, then my base ISO is gonna be at 800 as opposed to 100 whenever it's turned off. 
So if you're gonna be shooting in the dynamic range boost, which I do recommend because it just does such a great job with a lot of flexibility in post, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you've got some variable ND filters with you. Another really cool thing that people will like, especially if we're working on set, maybe you've got a creative director with you or the client is with you, is that you're gonna be able to use .cube files with this camera. So not just a LUT like a Rec. 709 LUT, but we're gonna be able to use a .cube file for showing on the back of the camera or pushing that out over HDMI to an external monitor. For me personally, one of the other really cool things I love about this camera is one of the new focus priority settings, and that is for face and eye. Now we've had the face and eye or the human detection before, which then what that one would do is if it lost the eye or the face, it would then revert to the body. But this one functions a little bit differently. So let me give you a real world scenario of how this works and comes into play and why this excites me so much. So I tend to work with the one plus area focus. Now with the one plus area focus, if I go ahead and turn on the face and eye detection for it, now what happens is when my face and my eye is detected, then it's gonna focus on that. But if it loses track of my face or my eye, instead of reverting to body focus, which is what it has done in the past, it will actually revert over to the one plus area focus. And that means that if I'm doing a product review or, or vlogging and I wanna put something up in front of the screen, then as long as I cover my face, it jumps to one plus area and snaps to focus on that particular object. And then when I take the object away, it then sees my face or my eye, and then it comes back into the face and eye detection focus. That's exciting, especially for product reviewers and you're doing vlogging that is a game changer in this camera. This camera also detects vertical shooting, so you can choose to have that added to or not add to the file itself. So it'll go ahead and flip that over in post-production for you. Additional audio features include 48 kilohertz, 24-bit audio with internal or an external microphone. And we can also get high resolution, 96 kilohertz, 24-bit audio with an external microphone. But like I mentioned, I'm gonna make a separate video about audio features and ways to use the four channels on a different video. Another feature that people have been asking about is the ability to punch in, to check focus while you're recording. And we can do that. The button that's right over here toward the top by the lens, while I'm recording, I can push that button and I'm gonna get punch in focus checking while I'm recording up to 60 frames per second. Also, like you'd expect in this camera, we're gonna be able to have access to the waveform monitor, the vector scope, and a luminance spot meter. Also, similar to the 2D noise reduction that we talked about in photography, we have a 3D noise reduction in video, which helps reduce unwanted noise, but more importantly, is it maintains contrast in moving subjects. And for those of you that love doing time-lapse video, there is a time-lapse assistant that helps you calculate now the number of shots that you need and the intervals between them to get the time-lapse that you want. Also, if you're used to using the focus transition, there is a new interface for that. And now when you're setting up your different positions for the transition, you can use your white balance ISO and exposure compensation buttons on the top to set the different positions. You can also turn on the red frame recording indicator. You also have frame markers, so you can set different frame dimensions on the back of the camera to ensure that what you're filming is gonna fit into the desired framing for social media. And we have the safety zone indicator here also for broadcast. All right, so that is a lot of cool features and there are a lot of cool improvements that we're seeing on the GH6. This camera truly is geared towards the hybrid shooter with some great photo improvements with that 25 megapixel sensor, but also a lot of cool features that we're looking for in video, including some great frame rates and also the dynamic range boost and other things that are just gonna make your life a whole lot easier whenever you're on set. So for me personally, coming from the S-Series lineup, I love this camera. This camera is exciting. There are some really cool features in here that I love, especially like I already mentioned, the face and eye combined with the one plus area focus setting. I mean, that is fantastic, especially if you like doing product review videos or a lot of vlogging. Anyway, I'm looking forward to getting back out and creating more content with this camera. If there's anything that you would like to see from me as far as videos to create with this, let me know. I can demonstrate features. I can throw up some more sample images and sample video 
just go out and create a bunch of content showing you guys the different modes and the frame rates and things. But anyway, so much that I can do. I already know I mentioned doing the sound in the audio configuration video, which I definitely will get to do in that. Now for pricing and availability, this camera is gonna be available toward the end of March, and the price is gonna be $21.99.99 for the body only, or $27.99.99 with the 12 to 60 lens. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching, and if you are enjoying the content, please subscribe to the channel, and I will see you on the next video.